I just want to show you the, the power of Bloodhound and how we can compromise our way onto the certificate template. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have the credentials, or oh, sorry, we have the password of Carlos PC, uh, which is a member of the main computers, which can then enroll into the server template. Okay, so uh, let's try to just request the template. So the command for that is rec. Uh, you will see some different stuff, uh, a lot of different parameters you can specify. We will only touch a few of them, but there are a lot of different parameters in case your environment is different. Maybe you want to uh, specify some IPs instead of host names and so on. Okay, so first of all, our username is now Carlos PC at actrix.live, our password is password. And then we should specify uh, the CA, which is, let's take a look at the template. It says that certificate authorities is lab root CA. So that is the name of our CA. It's not the server name, but the name of the certificate authority. And then we specify as a target, we specified the server DNS name. Okay. And the final thing we have to do is specify that the template we want to enroll in is called server. Uh, so if everything works, let's see, connecting. Sometimes I see this is timing out. Yeah, just need to run it again. Only in my environment, in the real world, it's, it's fine. There's something <laughs> wrong with my, I, I don't know what is wrong with my uh, uh, yeah, environment. Uh, but in this case, we, we got the certificate. Uh, it says a successfully requested certificate. It also <laughs> prints a re request ID. So our request was number 31 in this environment. And it also says got certificate without identification. Uh, so if we wanted to use this certificate, let's just try it out. And let's just specify the user is Carlos PC. And the domain is hacktricks.live. If we try to, yeah, get that. If we try to authenticate, it will say name mismatch between certificate and user. And this, I have seen a lot of issues on GitHub uh, for certify why, why do I get this error? And it's basically because uh, the certificate doesn't match the user we tried to log in with. Uh, and there's no identification in the certificate. Mm -hmm. But we know this one is vulnerable to ESC1 technique. And that is what we will exploit right now. So let's get back to the request command. Now, since it's vulnerable to ESC1, what we can do is we can specify an arbitrary username, which is marked by the dash UPN flag. So we can say administrator at hacktricks.live. So we are asking the certificate server, uh, please issue the certificate with this username inside it. And the reason we can do that is because it has the enrollee supplies subject uh, attribute. That means we, as the enrollee, as the user, can supply our own subject. Uh, so if we try to run it, let's hope. Time out again. Just needs a few tries. Now it says, got a certificate with the UPN, administrator at hacktricks.live. Okay, it saved the certificate. Uh, let's try to authenticate with the certificate. But this time, since we have some uh, identification inside the certificate, what Certify will do is it will try to extract it and then guess where it should authenticate and with what user. So we don't have to specify the user and domain anymore. Uh, so let's try to authenticate. And we got the NTLM hash for the administrator. Awesome. Uh, so this might seem like, okay, what can we do with that? But uh, let's just try to uh, authenticate with Win Remote, for instance. Um, uh, let's see if I can remember the syntax. Uh, <coughs> probably VC. Okay. So here again, we are using pass the hash attack. So we don't need to know the password. We just need to uh, get the password hash. And now we can see we are Hectrix administrator and we are logged into the to the domain controller. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was just to demonstrate uh, that we actually get, we do actually get the domain administrator's uh, credentials. Yep, definitely. Okay, definitely. so that was uh, EC1. Uh, it can come in different varieties. Um, maybe it's not domain computers, maybe it's just 
domain users instead. Um, and hopefully I can show you how that vulnerability can happen, how easy it is uh, to introduce the vulnerability in your environment, just so uh, you uh, the viewers might get an idea of how can this even happen? How can someone specify the enrollee supply subject? So um, this misconfiguration is the one we see at our pen test the most uh, because some environments are really old, and back then maybe they didn't know about um, they didn't know about all these vulnerabilities. But the templates are still there; it's still configured this way. Um, so this is what it looks like from the administrator interface. Is there any way you can make that bigger? Um, tough question. Let me see. Any display. Yeah, I only gave it maybe one CPU. Uh, maybe, maybe I can. Um, Windows um, didn't have some kind of magnifying glass uh, that you could use. Oh, maybe it does. Uh, magnifier. Oh. Okay, that can works. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea how I exit this one. Okay. Uh, how do I? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit difficult, but. Uh, this is what the certificate authority will look like to a system administrator. Uh, we have the lab root CA. We can see some revoke certificates, issued certificates. So here we can see all the certificates that have been issued. A lot of my testing, but most recently we have uh, like hack tricks for Carlos PC. And here are all the certificates that uh, templates that are enabled. Uh, so the way you create certificate templates is you click manage. Um, and the only way to, as far as I know, uh, to create a new certificate template, oh, I have, okay. Okay. Uh, is by duplicating an existing one. So Active Directory certificate services will come with some default ones. Not all of them are installed. Uh, but for instance, this one called web server, it is uh, inst uh, enabled by default uh, and Perhaps as a system administrator, you think, okay, the web server template is almost what I need. I'll just duplicate this one. Uh, and then you will get all these fields. Uh, most importantly, the subject name, this little checkbox is what can compromise your entire domain, mm -hmm. supply and request, which makes the user be, being the enrollee can supply the, the subject inside the request. And the subject is the username in this case that we did before or it can be built from Active Directory information. So if that one was checked and we try to request it, it will just put our username inside it. We couldn't specify it ourselves. Okay. Uh, so let's pretend we are system administrator. We just get this one. We duplicate it. Uh, we say our server authentication. No, I also want to use it for client authentication. Okay. And security, uh, perhaps I want also users to enroll in it. Okay, now you're vulnerable. Uh, so, so it's really just a few clicks and as a system administrator, when you're setting this up, probably you don't want to understand all of it. You just want it to work, uh, because certificates are really difficult to get right, especially if you don't have the knowledge about them, like deep technical. Um, so you click check boxes until everything work, it works, leave it alone. And that is how you become vulnerable. Um, so that was just to show for ESC1 uh, why we see it so often. It's because templates are duplicated. Maybe some checkboxes are already there. You give add some new, uh, you add some new yeah, permissions and new attributes. Um, 